We begin tonight in Northland, where the doctor at the centre of a vaccination debate has challenged anti-vaccine advocates to look a dying child in the eye and see how they feel. Figures obtained by Checkpoint from ESR today reveal more than 1,700 New Zealanders contracted vaccine-preventable diseases in 2016, including measles, mumps, rubella, whooping cough and hepatitis. A third of these cases were people aged under 19. The debate has resurfaced after Northland Dr Lance O'Sullivan stormed the stage of the controversial film Vaxxed on Monday night, begging people to vaccinate their children. And as Zach Fleming reports, even Autism New Zealand is backing Dr O'Sullivan, saying there is no link between the disease and the MMR vaccine. Tickets were just $6. Around 50 people watched, some for a second time. Some had driven nearly an hour to be there. The tiny theatre in Mangatoroto, a 90-minute drive north of Auckland, population 756, was nearly full. Mostly full of people who'd already made up their minds. I'm shocked that you guys are here, to be honest, because all the um, editors and the people in control of the media right through the world are busy doing the ostrich. By ostrich, local Dean Crafts implying the world's media is burying its head in the sand. And it's an ironic comparison to make. It's a myth. Ostriches don't bury their heads in the sand. Ironic because medical professionals and scientists the world over say there is no link between autism and vaccines. They say it's a myth. Don't listen to these people because they don't have the evidence to support what they're saying. Dr John Fraser, the Dean of Auckland University's Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences. He's spent 35 years specialising in immunology and infectious diseases. We'll hear more from him in a minute. But first, here's more from last night. I've never seen any good science indicating that vaccines are actually beneficial. Um, and to some extent, I think that they're a little bit of a marketing exercise on behalf of Big Pharma. So. But the world was once inundated with smallpox and polio it and was. now both have almost was, been the, the eliminated. Big, the big question is whether or not that was caused by improved hygiene and improved uh, nutrition and improved living standards, the heavy metals, the preservatives, the um, DNA from aborted fetuses that are, are used and that are made, that you have to carry the virus into the body on. I kind of find it morally unacceptable, um, even if there is some medical benefits to it. If the people who are so fearful of catching things, who are vaccinated, are that fearful and they have such trust that they'll work, what have they got to fear? In fact, the people they don't like, who they say aren't vaccinated, well, won't they just die of things and they won't be there anyway, so the problem's gone. So, I mean, what have they got to... What, what's the, what, that's not a good argument. Because some people can't be vaccinated because their immune systems aren't good enough, so they say that we should vaccinate ourselves to protect them. Thank you. Well, we live on a planet where shit happens. But the top <laughs> scientists in the Western world not been in integrity and lying and bearing it, um, it has massive implications. When you talk to my friends in, in natural health, we always come up to the whole thing that it's brainwashing. It's like all of society is brainwashed. The sniggers and deep breaths you heard were Dr Fraser listening to those responses. Oh, I, was, I got a bit lost in what he was trying to say. It would be a, an, a monstrous conspiracy. They are not in the pay of the pharmaceutical industry. I'm a parent. I have children. I vaccinated my two daughters because I wanted to protect them against these horrific diseases. He's categorical, unequivocal. The latest meta-analysis uh, in vaccine, it was published in 2014, it looked at 12, uh, uh, 1.2 million children around the world, five co case control studies, showing that there was absolutely no relationship between those children who were vaccinated and who weren't vaccinated and the rates of autism. So it's very clear that there is no association whatsoever. The one point that can't be disputed is that autism is more prevalent than it used to be, but Professor Fraser says that can be easily explained. And so one of the arguments the anti-vaccination lobby has said is that the rates of autism are lower in countries where there's lower vaccination rates i.e. third world countries. Well the reality is that third world countries don't have the capacity to diagnose autism. It's a very difficult disease to diagnose. It requires paediatricians and paediatric psychiatrists. Uh, and so unsurprisingly in countries such as third world countries, autism is not seen so much because it's not diagnosed. It may be there, but it's just not diagnosed. And his peers feel the same. Earlier this week, Dr Lance O'Sullivan, New Zealander of the Year in 2014, took centre stage at a screening of Vaxxed in Kaitaia, emotively begging viewers to vaccinate their children. This 
idea of anti-immunisation has killed children around the world and actually will continue to kill children. Then outside, afterwards... Come and see the damage that your vaccines have done to these children before you start talking to me about that. You come and see what damage is done by the vaccines. Organiser Trisha Cheel that night in Kaitaia responding to Dr O'Sullivan, asking her to visit children infected with measles, mumps or rubella. Fast forward back to last night. The organisers of the event declined repeated requests for interviews. They're the same woman who organised Monday night's event in Kaitaia. They say the media is biased and spreads propaganda and refuse to speak to any reporters unless they watch them watch the movie. I also put what viewers said last night to Dr O'Sullivan. To hear someone say that, hey, look, we live on a world and a planet where shit happens, I mean, like, that, that is just so... That's just so idiotic. I mean, you know, come into come into my culture, come into my community, or go to a community anywhere in New Zealand. Go face go face the parent of a child who's died from meningitis or from pneumonia or from whooping cough, and you tell them that shit happens. And let's see how far, how long you last in their house. Since his stage plea, he's received support from the health minister Jonathan Coleman, the New Zealand Medical Association, and even Autism New Zealand. Given there's no known cause and no known cure, it's human nature to try to find a cause and to try to find a cure. So I understand people looking for that, but what they're doing in the process is also potentially harming not only their own children but other children as well in terms of not getting them vaccinated for all the other, um, or, or, or for all the diseases that we thought were pretty much wiped out because of the vaccines um, that are starting to come back now. Checkpoint has tried to speak to a New Zealand medical professional who believes vaccines can cause health problems. As yet, nobody has stepped forward. Anti-vaccination spokespeople say the doctors they know of are too scared to speak publicly, even anonymously. There are five more screenings of vaxxed planned for New Zealand. The ticket seller, Eventbrite, has not responded to requests for comment. For Checkpoint, Zach Fleming. And we'll hear more from Dr Lance O'Sullivan after 6 o'clock tonight.